former Coronation Street star Nicola Thorpe first entered the public eye when she took one of her previous employers to court after she was fired for refusing to wear high heels to work, even appearing on Good Morning Britain to highlight her cause. Yeah, remember that. But her rise to fame and campaigning on women's rights brought with it a plague of unwanted attention and abuse. And Nicola joins us now. Michelle um, sets out in that report that this, this, this stalking happened over such a long kind of period of time. Yes. But I think it was just really shocking. I think I, I don't, found it really hard to understand when I was reading about this last night, was that the, um, the police showed you in February 2022... Yes. A, 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 ..an image of the person at that time they had in custody, but he wasn't actually charged until the following January, so that's 11 months later. Yes. During that whole period, the police didn't reveal to you his name, his identity, so you no. had to... to to, to go about your life knowing there was this stalker out there, yes. knowing you've seen a picture, but still not knowing... Not who knowing who he was. Yeah, actually, it was for about seven months that I knew nothing about him whatsoever. So he initially had stalked me over the course of two years, and it took me a while to realise, actually, that all of these instances were him because he created 25 different profiles to stalk, harass me, send me explicit messages, photographs, threats to me, threats to my family. And then when I got the phone call saying that he'd been arrested, I was so relieved because I thought, fantastic, who is he? I said, we can't tell you. Mm. I said, but where does he live, roughly? We can't tell you. Do I know him? Again, is he an ex-partner? We can't tell you anything. Ooh, it's giving me the it's, chills yeah. when you say that. And I said, I know it's not my partner, but would you be able to tell a woman if it was? They said, we can't give you any information. Why? About... Why? I was very confused about it and I still haven't had a kind of solid answer on why they couldn't do that. But for months, I kept begging them, please, can I just see a photograph mm. of him or his name? They wouldn't give me his name. I had to actually go to court when they took a stalking protection order out um, against him on my behalf. And I had to turn up to court, where he would be allowed to turn up as well, freely, and we would have been in the same waiting area. He didn't actually show up on that day. And it was only when I saw his name on the, um, the piece of paper outside of court that I saw his name for the first time. Then it was months after that, that I begged the police, can you just show me a photograph of him? Because he had quite a common name. I tried to find him on Facebook um, to no avail. Um, or I, wasn't, I wouldn't even know if I had found him because I didn't know what he looked like. They eventually showed me a photograph. They said, um, we can only show you for whilst you're here in the police station. I said, can my partner, can my parents see it? Because he's made threats to them too. And they said, no. What you found out as you say, simply by looking at the details of who, who should have been attending court that day, yes. that he was entitled to be there in the same courtroom. Yes. Which means that you could, at that point, before you knew that he hadn't turned up, mm -hmm. you could have been in a queue waiting to go into court next to the person who was accused and ultimately responsible, you found out, for stalking you. Yeah, actually, that did happen. Um, so it was a few weeks ago at his sentencing that I turned up to court, and if you've been to court before, I'm sure you have to queue up to go inside and you go through security and you give your name to the security guard as you're going through. Oh. And I was actually stood behind him in the queue and he gave his name to the security guard, at which point I just completely froze because that was him. That's the man who had harassed and stalked me since 2018. And he was right there in front of me. We are... we, we've also, sorry, Ed, but we've also tried to establish why, <laughs> under what protocol, under what rules the Metropolitan oh, Police... Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, would not reveal who it was, l allow you to have a photograph, give you more details, because I know you even asked how tall is he, what sort of presence does he have, yep. because that would make a significant difference. If Absolutely. you couldn't remember the details of the face, a, a more how rounded description of him Because would you, want, you want to know if you're going to be able to, look, you know, take care of yourself if he was to approach you in the street. That was the big thing. My main question was, would he be able to carry me? And that's, that's yeah. devastating, mm -hmm. because... With these kind of crimes, when somebody is kept anonymous, they become every single person that you meet. He was every guy at a bus stop. He was the person at work who looked at me funny. He was the guy in the supermarket. He just became everybody. Did you wonder if it could be a friend? Yep, I wondered if it could be a friend, somebody who had fallen out with me in the past, because he seemed to know so much about mm. my life. And I don't think that it's on women to change how we behave mm. online. It is on 
men to change their behaviour, abuse of men, and also for the police and the authorities to give us the tools to be able mm. to protect ourselves. Mm. Let us know, you know, if, if there's enough yes. evidence here to get a stalking protection order, then surely I should be allowed the right to know the name, the photograph and details of the man does, who's doing it. It does feel as though, look, it, it's a bit unfair to ask you about kind of, you know, wide issues because you've experienced it for yourself and mm. that was in and of itself a terrible traumatic thing but you just wonder listening to this and also our failures to get the police to explain to us mm. yes. uh, this issue about not revealing whether they said that they need more time <laughs> to find out why it well, was that they couldn't give you yeah. the identity, I, I, I which, which is a bit perplexing for it, us. It is, and I wouldn't be talking about that if it was about this case, if it was just me that this was happening to. No. It's happening yes. to other people as well. But, 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 also... but, my, but I guess my question is, is there something about this issue stalking mm -hmm. and the way you know, men think about this, which means that, that, that men have not taken it properly seriously that you know well you know until there's actually harm or yeah. an attack or something which is the, the, the tangible evidence of harm until yes. then it's sort of like well you know maybe it's not real and you know don't give them the identity because maybe that'd be unfair on this person yeah. who might be innocent and actually there you are mm -hmm. living in fear yeah. not knowing who this person is, you just feel as though the victim, in this case you, yeah. you aren't being supported by no. a system which seems to sort of not be on your side. Yeah, he had all the power. In fact, when he had this stalking protection order taken out against him, uh, the conditions, his bail conditions that were that he wasn't allowed to contact me. Now, the only person who would know if he had contacted me was him. How is that fair? Mm. How is that right? And, yeah, the, the, we don't know why they haven't... Um, been more helpful in this case, mm. but I think that it's time that the police really were on the front foot with this. Did Once, you feel they were, yeah. that they were thinking you weren't, you kind of, that it wasn't real? Did, no, were they you know doubting what? you? Actually, the police took it very, very seriously, mm. and the last thing I want to do is stop uh, people from coming forward thinking, oh, it's not going to be taken mm. seriously. Yeah. The Met, they were, the police officers were fantastic at going, mm. yes, this is real, this is a real crime, um, because I think things have changed over the years, and, and people committing this kind of act need to realise this, this person is facing a custodial sentence mm. yes. for these kinds of messages. It is a very, very serious crime. I just wish the focus wasn't just on punishing the perpetrator, but helping the victim through the process as well. Yeah. One of the problems the police said was that their investigation was delayed due to, in their words, the complex and protracted process of obtaining information yes. from the social media companies yes. in order to identify an offender mm -hmm. and support a charge. I mean, this guy, uh, as you said, made up 25 online aliases. At one point, he pretended to be a woman mm. called Helena, asking you for your advice because Helena, the made-up character, was being harassed by an employer. So could they meet you? I mean, this is just sick. Yeah. You know, you're, mm -hmm. you're working on behalf of women who are being harassed, who are being stalked, who are being victimised, who are being discriminated against. Mm -hmm. And somebody sets out to harass you using the identity of a potential yeah. victim. Because one of the criticisms I get from a lot of people online is, well, why, why are your DMs open? Why, why don't you just shut down your social media and yes. this would stop? Why well, actually, should you? Why should I, first and foremost? But secondly, I offer a lot of help and advice and services to women who, like you say, want to come forward and, and need to report sexual harassment, sexual abuse, and, and I kind of have a good chat with them and talk to them about how to approach it. So he actually pretended to be one of these women and wanted me to meet him outside a police station to report it. Um, I know, and I didn't, I, I, I believed it, and I thought, what a shame, this woman actually never responded on the day when it came to us meeting up, and I thought, oh, that's a shame. And then months later, he said, I'm Helena. <gasps> yeah. Look, it, it's very interesting, because you've just raised another important point. A lot of people say, well, if everyone had to be themselves on social media and verify their identity, yes. he would not have been able to... Uh, open 25 different accounts pretending mm -hmm. to be different people and the social media companies would have been able to reveal immediately who he was to the police. But as you said, there are also victims yes. who need to approach each other anonymously yes. and protect their identities and that's one of the arguments against Totally. It's that all policy, wrapped up in, the, in this it? exact case, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And how do you feel about it now? Are you just wanting to see the sentence and move on and... 
just kind of put that behind you or are you actually wanting to um, make sure that other people don't go through this kind of experience by getting yes. better support mm. from the police and wider and society? And more information. Definitely, better support from, from police, more information, but also I think I, I really want to understand why this is such a problem. There is an epidemic in yeah. um, harassment and abuse of women online. But rather than looking at what women can do to protect ourselves, I want to understand why this man, this individual, felt as though he needed to do this, because he's not alone. A lot of men, sadly, take to these kinds of behaviours because they're unhappy in their own lives. And I would like to kind of shift the focus onto what is going on with them? Why is this happening? Really try and kind of kill it at the source rather than having to deal with all of these women who, you know, have to sadly have the courage or bravery to come mm. forward and really relive this over and over again. Why can't we cut it off at source? Sure. I'm yeah. sure there was times when it's also women stalking men, but probably disproportionately men stalking yes. women. Yes, uh, uh, that's absolutely true. Absolutely true, yeah. yeah. Uh, and unacceptable on any and every level. Of course. Nicola thank Thorpe, thank you very thank much. You thank you. Good it. luck. Thank you so much. Mm. Such an important issue. And if you've been affected by it, uh, you can find advice and support at itv.com forward slash helplines.